Brother, remember, if, if somebody's giving you a blessing, don't deny the blessing, brother. Gemma, if you will give me $5, I'm going to say, oh, Gemma, give me $5. I'm going to receive the $5. You know why? Because the whole God will bless Gemma. Praise the Lord. All right, we will now dismiss the kids. Thank you, Brother Jude. Uh, we will now dismiss the kids. We we'll praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We would like to uh, welcome uh, uh, some of our friends in our midst today. Amen. Uh, Alex, uh, is this your first time to uh, join us? Your... No, okay. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, Donna, we would like to welcome Donna. As you know, Donna is the daughter of uh, Nana uh, Delia. Amen. They are from the Middle East and they are vacationing here. And the husband went back the other day, I think, to. Uh, you are staying in Kuwait, I understand. Dubai. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. They're staying in Dubai. They're here for vacation. And uh, thank you, Donna, for coming. God bless you. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap out. Virgie, where are you? Floor, floor tubbing. It's not in Virgie. Thanks a lot. Where is uh, not in Virgie? Hi, it's a video. I see, uh, okay. A oh, floor. Amen. Praise God. God is good. God is good. Uh, I have been sharing to you, my, my message today would be the last of the series that I am sharing. Uh, with you brethren and uh, you remember and uh, we emphasized about uh, you know like what Jude is saying uh, your personal relationship with the Lord uh, the, the first message I shared with you on my preaching is uh, we know and we know that the Lord speaks to us can I hear amen to that and uh, the first one I shared to you that you are uh, a sheep of the Lord you are a sheep amen you are a sheep, and uh, as a sheep, you hear the voice of your shepherd. Amen? The sheep follow the voice of the shepherd. Jesus Christ is our shepherd, and we are the sheep, and he always communicates with his people. Do you believe? Of course, you believe that. We know that God will speak to us. And I've shared with you about uh, friendship with God. God is our friend. Isn't it, Lala? He is our friend. And in every relationship that we have, brethren, uh, relationship entails communication. So if you do not communicate with somebody else, especially your uh, loved one, your relative, you are actually destroying your relationship with that person if you don't communicate. So if you say that God, you are my friend, friendship with God entails communication. You communicate with Him on a daily basis. Can I hear amen to that? And I shared to you, uh, well, I'll just uh, uh, summarize what I've, uh, I've been sharing to you. You know, that you can hear from God and God can speak to you. Remember what I mentioned to you, that God can speak to us through the scripture, through the Bible. When you read the word of God, God will speak to you. And secondly, we know that God will speak to us through godly people. So godly people will speak to us and God will use those people so we will receive words from God. And I believe that again and again, when it comes to personal relationship with God, your relationship with God entails communication. He communicates with us. We know that God has ear. Remember, He, he listens, He hears our prayer. And we believe that He hears our prayer. And at the same time, if God has ears, He also has, He communicates with us. So he doesn't only hear our prayer, he also speaks to us. And he can speak to us through the Bible, through godly people. And how do you know that God has spoken to you and what you heard is from the Lord? And, and, and the evidence of God is speaking to you is that you have what do you feel in your spirit, in your heart. You have what again? You have peace. 
If you know and you know God has spoken to you, the end result of death is God is giving you peace. If you are doing something and you have done something and you do not have peace in your spirit, in your heart, is stop doing that. It's not, it is not coming from the Lord. It is not coming from the Lord. And uh, last time I shared to you, uh, you know, uh, there are ten, remember the ten things God can speak to you? Now, maybe you are saying to yourself, God has not spoken to me. I am not experiencing God, you know, speaking to me by His whisper. Because we believe God can speak to us through whisper or audible voice. Now, if God is not speaking to you by means of His audible voice, He can speak to us through our circumstances. So if you say, Pastor, I am not receiving any word from God. So I want you to check and double check your circumstances. Where are you in your life right now? What is your circumstances in your life right now? Maybe God is speaking to you through your circumstances. Like what we said, and Jill mentioned about Jonah. Jonah heard from God, go to Nineveh, and instead of going to Nineveh, he went to Tarshish. So God has spoken to him. So God said to Joshua, and this is my own interpretation, so uh, Jonah, since you are not listening from me, I'm going to use circumstances to speak to you. So what was the circumstances that came in his life? Well, the big, huge uh, fish. He did not mention about whale, but it's a big fish that swallowed him, and God is speaking through circumstances. So what is your circumstances right now? And maybe God is speaking to you. But I believe God can speak to us through a whisper, by his words, and and and, and um, I believe most of the time God speaks uh, to you through the messenger of God, through your pastors, and through your leaders in the church. Amen. Now, the last uh, message I'm sharing with you today is uh, the title. Entitled my message: We recognize His word. We recognize Him. We recognize His voice and His word through what? Say it with me. Through what again? Through relationship. You recognize the voice of God through relationship. So uh, my question is, how can I recognize for sure the voice of God? How, how can I recognize? Now again, let me emphasize this to you, brethren. You recognize it through your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You recognize that God is speaking to you through your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So my personal relationship with God, since I know, entails communication, and because I have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I will recognize His voice. You will recognize His voice. And you will recognize if I'm not speaking to you, if you have a personal relationship with the Lord, and you are so close with the Lord, you will recognize, you know, if what I am sharing to you is from the Lord or not from the Lord. Now, why? Because the Holy Spirit in your personal relationship with the Lord is the very foundation of God is speaking to you. Now, I want you to listen to this, brethren. Listen to this. If God doesn't still speak today, if He stops speaking, if God doesn't still speak today, then the worst thing that we could ever do is tell someone they can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what I'm saying here is this. If God is not speaking, the worst thing that we can do, brethren, is let somebody know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. So because we believe that God can communicate, brethren, we have the boldness to share to other people that they can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if God doesn't speak today, it won't be a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying here, brethren? Because God is speaking to us, 
God is speaking to us that what we are share, sharing is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand that, brother, we have the boldness and courage to tell other people that they can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because we know and we know God will communicate with them. And He still communicates with us and He will speak to us. Amen? Are you, are you with me, brethren? Praise the name of the Lord. So listen to this. The very foundation, the foundation of hearing God's voice goes all the way back to personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the foundation of hearing from God? Relationship. Your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going back to the truth, brethren. The very foundation of God is speaking to us goes all the way back to your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As your pastor, you know what? I like what we said. Everything that we prepare, I prepare, we ask the Lord to give it to us. And you know what we discovered, what I discovered in the many years I'm preaching? I have to ask God for a burden. Lord, give me a burden. You know, a burden that passed on it. Lord, give me a burden. Could you give me a burden on, on, uh, on this ministry that we are doing? And you know, when I was praying about that, the Lord just spoke to me about a burden of your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you do not have any personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, your coming to church would be futile. It would be useless. So God has spoken to me. And I received that, and I said, the only way I can help you, brethren, is to, uh, to help you know how to hear from God. I can help you hear from God. I can teach you how to hear from God. This is, but there is one thing I cannot do for you. Are you ready for that? I can teach you how to be draw close, or how to draw close to God. I can teach you how to hear from God. But the one thing that I cannot do for you, brethren, is for for me to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ for you. Hello. And that's why this is the burden that I, I, I have in my heart. Lord, I can teach my brothers and my sisters on how to listen from you. But the one thing that I cannot do, brethren, Abby, I cannot have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ for you. That is your job. Your job is to draw closer to God. Hello? And that's the burden that I want to experience firsthand the personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can do it. It can happen, brethren. And I cannot do it for you. Even though I, in Tagalog, magtuwad-tuwad ako na manalangin para sa inyo, Panginoon, malapit po sana sila sa inyo, Panginoon. But if you're not going to do your part as a person, you know, building the relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't do that, brethren, what I am sharing to you will be useless. Hello? And that is why it is important for us to know. Now, I'm going to share to you the three things about personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what I'm saying here, brethren, is that when you share Jesus Christ to other people, yes, it's possible, it is true, God still speaks to people in a personal way. Because God has spoken to you. Okay? Now, let us share about three things about personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When you speak of personal relationship with Jesus Christ, better you have a personal, you know, intimacy with Him. Is it possible? It is possible, and it will happen. Okay. Number one of the three things about personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Number one, it is our highest. Priority. As a Christian, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ is your, say with me, highest priority. Say it again. Highest priority. Pastor, what about me going, go, you know, finishing my schooling? That is not your highest priority as a Christian, 
and as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor, how about my, my personal job? That is not your, your highest priority, brethren. In your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your highest priority, your relationship with Him, that is your foremost. That is your priority. My priority is my personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to emphasize that over and over again, brethren. Yes, I know I have to build a personal relationship with Rosanna as my wife because she is so beautiful. Hallelujah. But my highest priority is my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Because He died for me. I've been bought with a price and that is true in the scripture. My, I do not belong to myself. I belong to God and everything that I have because I've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. If I belong to the King of King, Kings, then my highest priority in this life is my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Hello. It is my personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, we read, For God knows that in the day you eat, you remember, brethren, the first, you know, the disobedience of our parents? So Satan came to them and tempted them. And this is what Satan actually to, uh, uh, what, what Satan said to, to, uh, to Eve in Genesis 3 verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, what is your, your highest priority in life, brethren? Say it again. Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to see in the Spirit what actually what the passage is telling us. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know what Satan is actually saying in this passage? For God knows that in the day you do this, your eyes will be open. And that is actually what Satan is saying to Adam and Eve. If you will do this, you will be like God. If you will do that, you will be, if you will do this, you're going to have peace. If you will do this, you're going to have joy. If you will do and do and do what Satan actually is saying here, if you will do this, doing, 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 you're going to have satisfaction in life. But can I tell you, brethren, it is not the doing that will satisfy us. So if your highest priority is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ and doing will not satisfy us, what is then the best so I can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? So Satan will say to us, brethren, if you will only do this, you will be satisfied. If you will do this, you will have joy. If you will do this, you have peace. But I will tell you, brethren, it is not the doing that satisfies us. It is actually... If Jesus lives in you, you're going to have joy. If you have Jesus in your life, you're going to have peace. If you have Jesus in your life, you're going to have satisfaction. Our satisfaction, brethren, is not the doing, the doing, the doing, 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 and buying, 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 buying. It is Jesus. If you have Jesus, you have, you are satisfied. If you have Jesus, because Satan is actually saying here, if you will do this, you're going to be satisfied. You know, your eyes will be open, but that is not the truth, brethren. I want to tell you, your, 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 your personal relationship with Jesus Christ is priority in your life. And what I'm emphasizing here is that if you have Jesus in your life, you'll be satisfied. If you have Jesus in everything that you do, you will have peace. Because no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no joy. No Jesus, no satisfaction. Hello? Yeah. Well, tell me, who is the most miserable individual in the world today? Those who don't have Jesus Christ in their life. Those who don't have God in their life. They're the most miserable. So what is your first priority? What is your priority? Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Talking to Him every day of your life. 
So the very thing that Satan tells you to do, and I'd like to listen to this, listen to this. The very thing that Satan tells you to do so that you'll be happy is actually the very thing that will cost you to lose what you already have. Did you get that, brother? Right? The very thing that Satan tells you to do so that you'll be happy is actually the very thing that will cause you to lose what you already have. So let me instance. I am single today, and I'm using this illustration. And I found this, this very beautiful woman. And I am I, I am rich, and I found this most beautiful woman in the world, and she is a Christian. I found out that I, after marrying her, she is a gold digger. You know what a gold digger is? Blim over them, blim over them, blim over them, buy me this and buy me that. And because I disobey God, the first thing that will happen is that because I am a Christian, I'm going to divorce the woman. Because I have, I have one billion in my bank account, and all of a sudden it's all gone because of her doing. And secondly, I'm going to lose her, and I lost everything because of her. I thought for the first time that because she's so beautiful, that I'll be satisfied. You see, Satan gave her to me, not realizing that after I receive her, it's the reason now that I'm losing everything. You know why? Because I am disobeying God. So I have to find somebody, if I am to marry somebody, and of course I already found my best in life, I'm going to look for a Christian. One who will agree with me, and one who will also put Jesus the priority of her life. I did not hear amen, brethren. Amen. And that is a good example, brethren, because I believe that the very thing that Satan tells you to do so that you'll be happy is actually the very thing that will cause you to lose what you already have. Amen. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord, of God, as he was walking in the garden, the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Do you remember that? <coughs> Looking for Adam and Eve after they had disobeyed. So what happened? They hid themselves. If you will use your imagination, brethren, before the fall, before they committed sin, God will come down in the coolness of the day. And many theologians believe that the coolness of the day is early in the morning. God will come down to the Garden of Eden and uh, have a date with Adam and Eve. And it's a nice time, brethren. You know, in the morning is the best time for you to spend time with the Lord. And sometimes, you know, Rosanna will wake up earlier than I do. And when I wake up, I... Uh, I pass her and she's gone. And I know she's spending time with the Lord. She's spending time with the Lord. And I want to see this one, brethren. That when God was looking for them, all of a sudden in the relationship, God was shocked. Well, I know God is, you can, we will never surprise God, but I am only using my own uh, natural instinct in explaining what is the, uh, the feeling of God. Because all of a sudden, this at least this Adam and Eve, all of a sudden said to God, we are afraid. You see what, I want you to see this one, brethren, before the fall, before the sin, they were not afraid hearing the voice of God. But after the fall, what happened now? They begin to fear the voice of God. When sin came into the world, people began to fear the voice of God. I'm glad that you don't fear the voice of God. Hello? Many people, they dread the following Sunday. Oh, pastor will be preaching against me. Oh, man. I'm going to close my ears. Man. Well, brethren, let me tell you this. If you are afraid hearing the word of God, and you don't want to listen to the word of God, Hallelujah, check yourself. Maybe, maybe there is something, you know, in there. 
I mean, you, you have seen. I'm saying, in other words, I'm saying, maybe you have seen. Because a sinner will always close his or her ear when it comes to the words of God. But the one who has been forgiven by the Lord will always rejoice hearing the word of God. And I'm glad that we have people, well, eight saints is it, praise the name of the Lord, that you do not, you know, uh, you, that you are not afraid in receiving the word of God. You are always happy receiving the word of God. You know, because our God, let me explain this to you, our God, there is a big difference here, brethren. Now, is God human? Yes or no? No. But is, is God a person then? Huh? All right. There's a difference between the two, and I want to understand this. Our God is not a human. <coughs> he is a person. And we already learned that, I already shared to you, uh, a person is what, brother? A person, if God is a person and he is not a human, God has mind, will, and emotion. That is a person. He is a person. He is mind, will, and emotion. And that's why if he is our priority, if we spend time with him, brother, he will communicate to us. He will communicate with us. See, what God did actually, the saddest word that God heard from Adam and Eve is, I heard your voice and I was afraid. Praise the name of the Lord. So I heard your voice and I was afraid and I hid myself. And it is true, brethren, sin separates men from God. But here's the good news. Are you ready for the good news? We praise God. The good news is that Jesus restored that relationship. We've been separated from God because of sin, but because of the cross. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, He took our place, praise be to God, and He restored that relationship. Listen to this. If Adam and Eve could hear God's voice before the fall, and Jesus has come now and restored us, we can still hear God's voice. Amen. If Adam and Eve, before the sin, before they, the fall, before they committed sin, they hear from God, and if Jesus Christ has restored the relationship we have with the Father, then it is for sure God speaks to us, and we hear the voice of God. Who among you here are married, 10 years married? Raise your hand. 10 years? Ten, uh, I say, like, around 10 years. What about those who are married 20 years? Raise your hand. How about 30 years? Are we 30 years? <laughs> 40 years. How long you're married? 40 years. And you say, not... Hallelujah, Nana is there 40 years. What about 50 years? 50 years? Oh, 50 years. Sister Ellen and, and I, Deli, and Brother Ed. 50 years. 60 years. <laughs> no 60 years? Okay, I, I, I'm using this illustration better. If you've been married 50 years or 60 years, or if you've been married 10 years, or say 5 years, and all of a sudden the telephone rang, and then on the other side, well, let me use this illustration. So you know we've been married more than 30 years, isn't it? And the son called me over the telephone, and the telephone rang, and without looking at the caller ID, because you know and you know who is the one calling with the caller ID, isn't it? And I did not see the caller ID, and I said, hello? And the son said, sweetheart. And I said, hello, who is this? Who are this is Rosanna. Who is Rosanna? Who is Rosanna? Now, brethren, if that is the case, when I get home, <laughs> and I say, who are you? This is Rosanna. Who is Rosanna? Your wife. What wife? You know your sweetheart? You'll be a big, big 
in trouble, Brother Henry. <laughs> now what I'm telling you here, veteran, is that how do I know that the other one, you know, the person on the other line is my spouse? How? Because of her voice. I have been with this woman more than 30 years. We have been communicating, we've been talking, we've been spending time, and she called one day and said, Who are you? <coughs> Nonetheless, I'm already 98 years old. I have I'll, I'll smile. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> So you will never deny if you will apply this in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, brethren. I know and I know that you will recognize the Christ. Because with thousands and hundreds and thousands of communication with my wife, how could I deny that she is the one and the other of the other line. I know and I know, even though I close my other ear, brethren, I know and I know that it's Rosanna. Because I've been communicating with this lady for more than 30 years, and brethren, we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know and you know. And this is what I'm saying to you, brethren, that it is your highest priority. So how can I recognize God's voice? Listen to this. The answer is, it's easy. Just spend time with Him. Just spend time with Him. Can I get amen to that? Amen. Spend time with Him. Hallelujah. I know there are many husbands here who are so afraid every time the wife calls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I know there are some husbands. I'm glad I'm here at Eight Saces. <laughs> and there are also wives, you know, who are afraid when the husband calls. Brethren, if you are afraid, when your spouse is calling you, that is no longer a relationship. Hello? You have to do something about it. It's not. And, 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 and girl, girl, the telephone rings and, oh, because there are some of you who put the name instead of uh, the name of your wife, you put my love. And you see it in the, uh, you know, what do you call that? Caller ID. My asawa. My mahal. And then once you see that my mahal is calling and you begin to shake. <laughs> and that is not a relationship anymore, Reverend. A relationship is that once the telephone rang and you saw in your caller ID, my mahal, my love, my sweetheart, my darling, my eternity, then you answer it right away because you are so in love. The same thing if God is speaking to you, brother, you are so in love and receiving it, hallelujah. Even it is bitter and it hurts your feeling, you will say, Lord, I'm going to take in your word because you're communicating with me and your priority is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Hello? You agree with me? I can I touch you number two, brethren. It's our, number two is, our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is our highest pursuit. Now when I say pursuit, brethren, this is your highest occupation in your time and thought. Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ is your highest pursuit. Relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is always number one in your time and also in your thoughts. Now think about this. Now think that you are in the Garden of Eden. Now who among you have been in the Garden of Eden? I don't know if we're going to see that again because in the book of Revelation it's mentioned that God will restore you know, the past what Satan destroyed. And I'm sure better we're going to see the Garden of Eden again. 
We're going to see the Garden of Eden is the Lord God who will restore what Satan destroyed. So don't worry if you haven't seen the Garden of Eden. Now, there are two uh, trees that was emphasized in Genesis chapter 3. You remember? Number one, the tree of Tame. Number one is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that is what God said to Adam and Eve, don't you ever eat or touch that fruit. Because once you touch that and eat it, what happened to them? Keith. They will? Keith. Come on. They will surely die. They die. Don't you ever eat this and you will surely die. And the other tree, remember, what was the other tree? The tree of? The tree of life. So there are two things, two trees that was emphasized in the book of Revelation. If you, I, not the Revelation, but Janet says, this is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, my question is, which tree did God want for Adam and Eve to pursue? Which tree? It is the tree of life. God did not say, I want you to pursue the tree of Knowing good and evil. Because I want you to listen to this, brethren. God never intended for us, and I want to repeat this one, God never intended for us to live by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Never God intended for us to focus on this tree. He wants us to live now, I want to listen to this one and receive this. He wants you to live by His voice. He wants you to live by His voice. And here is where Satan is starting with Adam and Eve. Has God, you remember in John, in, in, in Revelation, uh, in Genesis 3, 1, it says, Has God indeed, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And Satan actually tried to cast doubt on the words of God and on the voice of God. Once you doubt, you doubt the words of God and the voice of God. Because when Adam and Eve doubted the voice of God, when they heard the commandment of God, they disobeyed Him because they, you know, they doubted the word of God. They say that injected the doubt in their mind, and because they doubted the words of God, you see what happened? He got them to doubt the word of God and got them to disobey God and sin against God. That's why God doesn't want you to live, and I quote and I go, is this good thing I need to do? He doesn't want you to live to, with, with that phrase, ito ba yung magandang bagay na gagawin ko? That is not the thing that we have to do, brethren. So here, <laughs> God doesn't want you to live, is this the good thing I need to do? But He wants you to live, listen to this, with this truth, is this God thing for me to do? So there's a difference between the two. Is this a God thing God wants us to live, is this the God thing for me to do? He wants to you know, he wants his sheep to hear his voice. And I want to emphasize this over and over again. Your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is your highest pursuit in this life. He should be, and your personal relationship with God should be, you know, should occupy your thoughts and your time. Because you can do that while well working better at while well, you are at home. Praise the name of the Lord. So here, he wants his ship to hear his voice. And that is the way God wants us to live our life here on earth. To hear the voice of God. So what about the conscience? Well, you know, there's a difference between your, your spirit hearing the voice of God with the conscience. 
you know, what is the ministry? What is the role? In other words, what is the role of your conscience? Many times you will say to yourself, oh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, overpower my conscience. Whatever my conscience will tell me, I will do. Is that true? No. Because sometimes, you know, God will come against our conscience. And you thought it is good. Have you ever seen a man in the Bible who was actually disobeying the conscience that God has given him? Do you know that person who disobeyed the conscience that God has given him? Abraham. Abraham. His conscience, Lord, I cannot sacrifice my son. But God said, I want you to go against your conscience. I want you to sacrifice your son. And what I'm saying here, brethren, <coughs> is that when it comes to hearing the word of God, you do not hear the voice of God through your conscience. You hear the voice of God through your spirit. You got it, Lala? You got it through your spirit. And this is how God wants us to live. He wants us to live according to the voice of God that is received through our spirit. Because once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the next step that God will do, according to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, is to cleanse you, or to cleanse your conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Don't you know, if you're not aware, brethren, many times your conscience, you thought it is the right thing to follow, but that is not the right thing to follow. It's because our conscience, unless it is cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, will never, and that conscience will never lead us to the right direction. The only way we can have a good conscience is to have a, a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is your pursuit in life, brethren? Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Number three. And we're almost there. It's our highest passion. It's our highest passion. Our relationship with God is our highest passion. Let's read Luke chapter 10, verse 38 and 42. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said, but Martha was distracted by all the preparation, preparations that had to be made. She came to him, to Jesus Christ, and asked, Jesus don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are so worried and upset about many things. But few things, but one, in some translations, it's just one thing is needed. Is that what it says there? But one thing is needed. And you know what that one thing is, brethren? Mary has chosen what is better than his good part, which will not be taken away from her. You know what Jesus Christ is saying here? This is her pursuit of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because many of us, we are so worried about sending money to the field. They are asking again, money, money. Have you ever experienced that sometimes, brother? You, you're thinking of your mom in the Philippines. Man, I have to go home, she's dying. Oh, man, I cannot sleep, I cannot eat. You're worried about your husband in the Philippines. Lord, mga meron na siyang kinikin na ba? Lord, you're your word about everything. But you know why Why the world and even your life is bothering us? Bothering us? It's because we are setting aside the best part in life. And that is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Brethren, 
Instead of you thinking about money, instead of you thinking that you're growing old, instead of you thinking about your husband, thinking about your girlfriend, thinking about this and that, why don't you just sit down and spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that is our highest pursuit, brethren. Our passion is our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know what Jesus, when you spend time with him, he will say, Everything is okay. Don't worry about mom. Don't worry about your husband. Don't worry about money. All these things will be added unto you. Because that is our highest priority, is our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I give an amen to that? Amen. So are you worried and troubled about many things? Are you worried? Jesus is saying to you, spend time with me. You spend time with me. And I want you to listen to this better. If you don't hear God after this series, I was spoken to you. If you don't hear God after this series, <laughs> no, if you, I, and this is if this is serious problem. It's because you don't have and you are not developing your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's easy, brethren. Spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will speak to you. He will speak to us. And like what I said, brethren, I can teach you how to hear from God. I can teach you how, step by step, you know, get a remote from the Word of God. But the one thing I cannot develop or do is develop a personal relationship with Jesus for you. I cannot do that, brethren. I can't. I cannot do it for you. Uh, can I encourage you? Spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know you can hear from God. I know you can hear from God. But you have to develop your personal relationship with Him. And maybe some of you here right now, you messed up like Adam and Eve. And, and you are hiding. The reason why you are hiding is because from him is because you are hiding something in your spirit. But you know what? Good news. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. He can clear our conscience. He can forgive us. Oh, hallelujah. God is so forgiving. And he can he had already restored our relationship. And you can hear from God. I will guarantee you, brethren, you can hear from God. Let's understand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.